Hello friends, welcome to all and tutor. I am Sanjay. In this video, we will discuss a very interesting topic of Coordinator 4 and that is how to create a custom Spark CLI command and that command will generate fake data for our database table. If I back to editor, so in the last two videos, we had seen the great detailed concept about basics of creating custom Spark CLI command. Now in this video, this is all about the continuation of last video. In this video, we will create a custom Spark CLI command which basically generates some fake data. And one more thing before starting this video that if you have no idea about previous videos, don't worry, actually we will see all the concept from basics. So first thing first, what are Spark CLI commands? So Spark CLI commands are those commands inside Coordinator 4. By the help of that, we can manage our entire application. In this video, we will create a custom Spark CLI command. And that command will generate some fake data. So in this video, if I go to slide. So here, in this video, what we will see, we will see the concept of migration first. By the help of migration, we will create a table structure. Then we will generate a model file. After that, we will create a command, means a custom command. Inside custom command, we will have all the logics which generate fake data. So these are the things we will cover inside this video. So first thing first, let's start with this migration. Back to project terminal, php spark make migration and we want to generate a users table so here it will be create underscore users underscore table or instead of generating users table i want to generate employees table press enter it will create a file create employees table dot php and this file we can find inside migrations folder back to editor go inside app database migrations and here we have our second migration file that is create employees table. So in, inside this class we have two methods that is up method and down method. By the help of this up method we can create our table structure. So once we use the command called migrate this up method will be called and whenever we use rollback command so in that case this down method will be called. But in this video we'll use this up method and the concept of migrate command. So to create a table structure, we need to make use of this forge object. So this forge, I will call add field method. The next method we will use called this forge add primary key. And the next method will be called this forge. And here it will be create table. So let's go inside this add field. By the help of this add field method, we can define our table columns and also we can define the table properties. So let's say that inside employees table, we want the columns as id, name, email and let's say salary. Let's define its properties. So id type equals to int, it means that it will contain the integer values. Next we have let's say auto increment equals to true. Next property we have called unsigned equals to true. And finally let's say constant, it means field length, let's say 5 characters. I will go inside this name field. This name field will contain string values. So type equals to let's say varchar constraint equals to let's say 120 characters null equals to false it means that this field is required i will go and copy the name attributes go inside this email field so here this email field is also going to contain the string value so varchar is okay instead of 120 characters of fill length let's say 80 characters Null equals to false, it means that email field is also required. Now next go inside this salary. I will go and copy the attributes of this email field. 
pasting it here this salary field is going to contain the numeric value so in this case it will be type of end in this constant let's say five characters and i will pass null equals to true it means that this field is optional we can insert any value or in case we can also insert the null value now next go inside this add primary key method i will pass the column as id which means that from these columns list i want to make this id column as a primary key next we need to define the table name so here it will be called employees let's go inside this down method it said this forge i will use a command called drop table and here it will be employees so successfully now we have the complete structure complete code of this up method and down method let's go and migrate this migration file and create a table inside our database so inside this database right now we have two tables called migrations and users it's back to project terminal php spark migrate if i press enter as we can see running all new migrations and migration completed back to browser reload this structure now as we can see that we have third table that is employees let's go inside the structure part of that table so here we have the columns as id which is a primary key unsigned constant equals to 5 it means that the fill length value and auto increments equals to true so here we have now the name field email field and salary so the first thing what we had discussed that is all about migration we have completed now next we need to create a model file so what is model model is a class inside code igniter 4 by the help of that we can connect with a database table back to project terminal php spark let's say make model and we want to create a model for employees table so it will be called employee and i will pass a suffix flag it means it will generate a file called employee model.php press enter now we can see this file inside models folder back to editor go inside app inside app next we need to go models and here we have employee model now we can see a variable called table and inside this table we have the table name in your case if the table name is different something called table underscore employees also you can pass here next we have called primary key so here we have the value as id because as we know from this table is structure that id is an auto incremented and a primary key column next we go inside this model now here we have the field called allowed fields so in this array we need to pass all the columns where we need to insert values so from this table is structure as we know that to create any employee we need to pass the values for this name email and salary because id is auto incremented column so it means whenever we insert any new row inside this employees table id will be automatically generated so these columns like name email and salary we need to pass inside allowed fields back to editor it's a name email and salary so successfully also we have done with the model settings so this part is also done now next we need to create a custom command back to terminal so here if i type php spark so from generators we are going to use make of this make command it generates a new spark command so whenever we make use of this make command it generates a spark command file and that file will be stored inside this commands folder initially if your setup is totally new so in that case this folder will not be available but when we use this command called make command automatically this commands folder will be generated so in this folder we have user command actually this file we had created inside last video but in this folder also we need to create another file for this video so back to project terminal let's clear this console first so php spark let's say make command and here we're going to create a custom command that will generate fake users so i will call it as 
generate user and I will pass suffix as a flag. It means it will generate a file called generate user command.php. Press enter. Now we can see that generate user command.php file inside commands folder. Back to editor. Go here inside commands folder and here we have our command file. So the first variable we have inside this class called group. And this group seems let's go and open php spark first. So we can see that this is all about the list of spark commands. So here we have some defined groups like cache, code igniter, database, encryption, generators. So these are nothing. These are group names. So by default, according to this skeleton, whenever we create any custom command, automatically it will go inside code igniter group. And where it is? So this is all about code igniter group. And as you can see here, command name. But we want that this command means this custom command will be grouped inside our own group. So in this case, let's say fake command. So if we save, go here, again type php spark, pressing enter. So we can see that here we have a new group called fake command. Back to editor. Now next we have here command name. So let's say that instead of this dummy value, let's say generate colon users. Next I will go inside for this description. Let's say this command will generate fake users. Save this value. Go here. Again if I type php spark here we have some spelling mistakes so php spark so here we have fake command group generate users is the command name and here we have the description this command will generate fake users now if you're talking about the functionality and one more thing this is all about the uses it means whenever we open the help manual this uses argument options actually comes into play so what i will do i will go here let's say generate users it means the command name and for this command i will not use any argument and options so leave blank as it is as argument and options go here php spark and let's open help manual so php spark help let's say generate users if i press enter now we can see that here we have the simplest uses that is all about generate users. This command will generate fake users. Now let's talk about the functionality of this custom command. In Spark commands, all the working of any command is decided by this run method. So it means that what basically this custom command will perform, all the functions will go inside this run method. So inside this method, what I will do? I want to generate fake users but before generation actually we want to know that how many users we want to create so the best option that the input value it means the number of users will take from the user so what i will do here we'll use the concept of cli so already inside this custom command class file as we can see at the top line of code here we have a cli class so from this cli class we'll use a method called prompt by the help of prompt, we'll take a user input value and the question will ask that how many users actually the user wants to generate. So here, it's a CLI prompt and let's say how many users want to generate. Second value of this prompt method is all about the default value. It means if let's say user will not pass any value for this question so in that case what will be the default value so let's i will pass 10 for now save this change back to terminal if i run our custom command php spark it's a generate users press enter now we can see that this is all about our prompt this is our question what we are asking for user and here the default value so once user will provide any value, that value will be picked, otherwise this default value will be used. But in this case, 
I will not pass any value it means the user prompt should be required. So in this case I will provide null here. Now next also I will provide a validation that is required. It means it means the user value must be provided. So if I save this change, go here, again execute the HP Spark generate users. We can see there is no default value, but if user actually press enter without any value, we can see the how many users want to generate field is required. It means user must provide a value here. So let's say that if user provide any value, the value will be stored, let's say inside this count variable. So after getting this count value, I will use the concept of for loop. Let's i equals to 0. It will go up to this count and increment that value. And inside this loop, we'll use the concept of faker library. And one more thing. Also, we need to load this employee model inside this custom command file. So here, we'll import two classes. The first one will be our model. So app models and it will be employee model. And second, we'll use the concept of faker library. Why we need that? Because by using faker library, we'll generate fake data. So here, I will use faker backward slash and then use factory. Just go inside our run method. Go here. Let's define a data variable. It's an empty array. Go here inside this for loop. And one more thing. After this data, let's create a faker object. So faker object equals to factory. What we have imported. And we'll call create method. Once we write this line, it will create a faker object. By the help of this object, we can call all the methods which generates the fake data. Let's go inside this for loop. So data equals to. As we know that to create any user means employee, we need the value as name, email and salary. So go inside customer command file. It's a name, email. And after email, we have as salary. Now next, we need to generate fake data for all these columns. So we'll use the concept of faker object and look at IntelliSense. If I type name here, so this faker object provided a method use and a property use. So either we can use this method or this name property. Automatically, it will generate a fake value for this employee name. So I will use this property figure object name. It means it will return every time a unique random value as a fake value. Let's go inside for this email value. Again, I will use figure object type email. So we can see that it has provided lots of methods and properties which basically generates a fake email value. Either we can use this email method email property free email as a method, free email as a property. So in this case, I will use this email property. So once we use that, every time it will generate a random unique value and that will be a fake email address. Let's go inside salary. As we know that for this column, we want an integer value. So let's use figure object first. And I will type, as we can see here, number between it's a method, so we want to pass int1 means the minimum range. So I will pass, let's say this is the first value. In the second value, also we need to pass the maximum value. So let's say that this is all about a range we want to provide as a salary. So finally, this loop will start from 0, go 1 less than up to this count value. All the values will be stored inside this data array. And then we'll insert this data array inside our employees table. So to insert this data inside employees table, we need to create an object of this employee model. Let's go to run method. After this for loop, let's say employee object equals to new employee model. 
and here by the help of this object we'll call insert batch method and in this batch method we need to provide a set of data so here after insertion let's write a message into our cli so that a confirmation will be generated that fake users generated so let's say successfully system has generated if i go and copy this count variable generated concatenate with this count variable users so successfully we have all the logics inside this run method now let's go back to terminal and test our generate users command and before that if i go inside our table structure click on browse button so right now we don't have any row so php spark let's say generate users press enter it is asking for a prompt value let's pass for now the 10 number of employees press enter successfully system has generated 10 users so instead of calling users I will call it as employees save the change go here click on browse now as we can see that inside our employees table 10 number of rows available and we can see the name value email value and a salary value and this is all about a random unique fake data let's go and before that i will go inside this operations let's go and truncate our table so right now as we can see again we don't have any data let's generate php spark generate users and this time i will generate 500 number of rows press enter and system has generated 500 employees back to table click on browse now we can see that inside our table total number of rows equals to 500 and we are getting lots of fake data so we can see that this is the custom command what we had created and it is generating fake data within seconds so this is all about the importance of generating custom spark command so i hope this video has given you the complete confidence or idea about creating custom commands inside code igniter 4 so please like comment to this video and subscribe to our channel so for this video session guys thank you for watching and have a great day